Yep, and rolling. What is up, guys? It is me, Heidi Powell, here to talk to you about 11 foods that you think are healthy but actually are not. Okay, food number one. We're gonna talk about granola. I mean, how many times have we heard that granola is the healthiest food, we need to eat it every day for breakfast, so we go to the store, we buy it, it tastes so amazing, and we can't figure out why we're not losing weight or hitting our nutrition goals. Well, I have news for you. When you flip over the back of a granola bag, you know that, and I'm not talking about granola bars right now, I'm talking about a bag of granola that you sprinkle over your yogurt, you eat with almond milk or whatever it is, Flip over the bag, chances are there's a ton of sugar in it. So you really wanna look out for the sugar, for all of the added honey, and different things that are really making it taste so amazing. Now there are really good granolas out there. Most of the good granolas you're gonna find in the bulk, the bin section at like say a Sprouts or a Whole Foods store, but look for the granolas that have nuts, seeds, oats, um, all real, like flax, all that stuff that's really good. It doesn't have a ton of things binding it together, not a lot of sugar. Those are the granolas that you want to look for. The next thing we're gonna talk about. I mean, isn't the whole world right now on like a protein bar kick, like a craze? Everybody thinks that they need to eat protein bars to be healthy, but guys, so many of the protein bars out there, so many of the nutrition bars are actually like a Snickers bar with a little added protein in it. So you really have to be careful when you're looking for a good protein bar. You wanna make sure that there is more protein than there are carbs and much more protein than there is fat. So I say a good rule of thumb, you wanna look for a bar that has about, oh, five to seven, five to eight grams of fat, no more than that, unless you're doing like a keto diet, you're gonna go a lot higher. And then with the carb count, I like a granola or a protein bar that has between 12 and 25 grams of carbs. And then I will never eat a protein bar unless it has at least 20 grams of protein. So that's my rule of thumb. Now there's an exception, the little snack size um, bars, that you're gonna get about eight to 12 grams of protein in the snack size. But rule of thumb, look for that. You're also gonna wanna look for added sugar in everything. Everything you do, turn that label over, look for added sugar. If there's too much sugar in it, if sugar is making up most of the carb content, that's a big X, just like that. Isn't there an emoji? that does that, something like that. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about, <sighs> dried fruit. I mean, I grew up thinking that dried fruit was so healthy for me, and then I saw, I actually did a comparison the other day where I got a handful of dried bananas and a handful of fresh raspberries, and there were 500, I did the calculations, I, I weighed it out, there were 524, uh, 524 calories in a handful of dried banana chips and 34 calories in a handful of raspberries. So over 500 calories difference in the dried fruit. What we don't realize, when fruit dries, so if I were to eat a whole banana, I would have, it would be about 100 calories in one banana, but when we start slicing it and drying the fruit, it shrivels up and that same calorie content takes up a lot less space, so you get more in a handful than you would with the real fresh whole fruits. So always opt for the real fresh whole fruits, not the dry fruit. Okay, another thing, now this one might go, um, you, you might already know this one but I'm still gonna bring it up because this is technically still what is helping lead to our ob obesity epidemic. Fruit juice, guys. I, and I, I know my kids, my kids are raised around me and my husband saying, no fruit juice, no fruit juice, no fruit juice, but still something inside of them because they think it's fruit. They're like, oh, I'll be healthy and I'll drink orange juice, but they, and they don't know the difference. And most people don't know the difference between fresh squeezed orange juice and something like Sunny D which is they think it's orange and they know it's juice. But the reality is the, the orange, the Sunny D orange juice is, is pure sugar. It's loaded with sugar, it, that's all, really all that it is. And even when you're looking at fresh squeezed juices, it's still that the sugar content is so high. So while we think we're being healthy and we're making healthy choices, I want you to really look out for those juices and maybe try and steer clear from them. There are some really good ones out there that dilute the juice. So it's fresh squeezed juice and then they dilute it with water to make it less sugary. Um, but on that juice note too, I'm kind of a fiend for, uh, I go to these juice bars lately and I'm always getting my power green shake. Like at Nectar, it's called a greenie. At this local place here in Utah, it's called Roxbury. 
and I'm sorry, Roxbury is the name of the place, but it's called a Power Greens drink. I love the Power Greens drink. Love it, love it. It's so good and in my mind. I'm like, it's kale, it's celery, there's some lemon in it, maybe a little bit of apple to give it that flavor. The other day, this is true story, the other day I'm like, I need to figure out what's in it. It's gotta be like 50 calories, no more, no less. Um, ended up asking, inside of my little 16 ounce, what is this? This much, 16 ounce green drink, there were two whole apples squeezed into it. So I did the math, I'm like, just an apple alone, there's 200 calories in this drink. No wonder it tastes so amazing, but it was green, so I thought it was good for me. So I started having them make it with half an apple, so I'm getting 50 calories from apple and about 40 calories from all the other greens in it. So know that too, when you're doing your green drinks, Ask how much apple is in there because it's the sugars in there. You just don't realize it. You might have to have them cut it down. Okay, another thing I wanna talk about. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I can't tell you how many times I've heard, it's gluten free, it's healthy, it's organic. I can totally eat it, oh my gosh. I mean, I, I'm not gonna say who. I have a specific family member that literally <laughs> sends us boxes of gluten free and organic Shit, is that bad to say on YouTube, Nick? <laughs> but I get loads of it in the mail and they're so good and there's this big misconception that if it's gluten-free and if it's organic, it's healthy. I'm here to break, I, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is, I'm like the bubble burster today. I, I feel like the biggest bubble burster, but the gluten-free and organic foods are still just as unhealthy as the other. If you're gonna, if someone gives you a box of gluten-free brownies, Know that those gluten-free brownies may have been made with flour that is not wheat-based. Maybe it's rice-based or soy-based or whatever it is, but it's not gonna be, it's still gonna have the same shortening. It's gonna have the same cocoa chocolate in it. It's gonna have the same sugar. It's gonna have the same everything in it that still makes that brownie unhealthy. Now, you should know me by now. I'm not here saying you can never eat unhealthfully because I am a huge believer in all things in moderation. Like the other night, I did just have a gluten-free sugar cookie, but it's in moderation. Don't eat the foods, don't load your diet up with boxes of gluten-free or pastries that are organic because they have those two words, gluten and organic free. No, no, no. They are the same as the other foods. They're just made with slightly different ingredients to tweak it so people that have gluten intolerances can still enjoy the foods that they love. Okay, another thing I wanna talk about. Um, how many people, are you watching this right now, do eat salads thinking you're healthy? I'm gonna go on a diet, I, which I don't like the diet word, but that's for another blog. We won't even talk about that now. But people saying, I'm gonna go on a diet and I'm gonna look, it's this freaking salad diet. I'm just gonna eat tons of greens. All I'm eating is lettuce, carrots, bell peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, that's it. And you still have a hard time losing weight. And it's never fulfilling. If you don't feel good, well, I'll tell you why. It's because the salad dressing you are loading on your salad is giving you more calories than if you would have just eaten that Big Mac to begin with. And that is true story. I will actually pull some calorie comparisons and put them up on screen right now. So little do you know that that little two tablespoon serving of salad dressing has a whopping at least 200 calories. And let's be honest, who's actually gonna drizzle two tablespoons on their salad? Not me, not me. I am always looking for the calorie free or low calorie salad dressings so I can eat a bulk, a big old salad with tons of dressing and get the satisfaction that I need. But if that's not satisfying to you, you're following the wrong diet. Again, that's a different one. The next thing I wanna talk about, sushi. Sushi, everybody thinks because we're going out for sushi, that's a healthy dinner. So if you think about it, there are two kinds of sushi. There's a kind of sushi with rice, white rice, and the raw sashimi, the fish on top the kind that nobody wants to eat, but that's actually the healthy kind. And then you jump over to the rolls that taste so good and everybody wants to eat and they think they're eating them with their chopsticks and they think they're amazingly healthy. Those rolls, when you actually dissect them, well, if they're not fried on the outside, they usually have some kind of fried fish or fried shrimp inside of it. And then they have avocado, cream cheese, usually some like sweet chili sauce that's loaded with sugar, all sorts of stuff that makes it taste so amazing. And then we're dipping it in soy sauce, which is usually not low sodium. So we're getting the sugar, the fat, the sodium, 
this big like bomb of unhealthiness because we're just not taking the time to understand that not all sushi is created equally. It's not. So if you're trying to be healthy and you're wanting to go for sushi, you're going to want to go for the things that have the more raw ingredients, look for less fried foods. Avocado is good to have in it. Even a little bit of cream cheese, try and avoid fried foods when you're choosing your roll. Um, yogurt. Yogurt is next on my list. Yogurt is, I mean, there's a huge section at almost every store you go to now with tons of yogurt because people know that yogurt's healthy. Well, again, not all yogurt is created equally. There's the yogurt that has high sugar content, um, not a lot of live cultures, because I mean, some of it's just completely processed and it's not what you want. And then there's the kinds, I look for the Greek yogurts because the Greek yogurts typically have a um, much lower sugar content. You're gonna have a lot higher protein content there. And I always choose, I like the ones with zero fat so that I can get my fats from, from adding nuts or healthy granola, not any granola, but healthy granola. Um, but steer clear of yogurt, usually very low in protein, usually very high in sugar. So you just have to find the right ones. Flip that label over, get in the habit of reading labels at grocery stores, it will save you. Number nine on my list, is microwave popcorn. Nick, this is why I have you. <laughs> Tell me count. Microwave popcorn, number nine. Number nine on my list. I actually, true story, back in high school when I was trying to cut my calories as low as possible, I wasn't very good at reading labels, clearly, and I would pop popcorn all day long. And I would just eat this microwave popcorn because I remember hearing from people, microwave popcorn has very little calories in it. I didn't realize until I, I mean, I, that was in the midst of my eating disorder, but I didn't realize until like months after I'd been downing this microwave popcorn, that the popcorn that I loved and I thought was so healthy was loaded with butter and salt. I mean, it, there were like four or 500 calories per bag, maybe even more. I mean, it was a lot per bag of popcorn. Microwave popcorn can be good for you. It can be healthy. It can be something to help fill your stomach and keep you feeling satisfied. But usually it's, it's don't, you're not gonna want the movie, it's like movie theater popcorn. The butter, pop-o butter or whatever they call them. There's like one brand that has an O in it. It's like pop-o butter or butter-o pop. I don't even know what it is. But look for the smart pops or the ones that are just usually seasoned with sea salt or, uh, and a little bit of butter's okay, but I like to look for like the 100 calorie Smart Pot bags are actually amazing. They're perfectly portioned. They're exactly what you will want if you are trying to kind of um, curb those cravings and fill that salty desire that you're having. Number 10, pickles. Pickles. I even hear people all the, like even going through the show, when we were training on extreme weight loss, they would want to eat pickles all the time because in their minds they're like, this big pickle right here, it's the size of my water bottle, has five calories in it. And they knew that they could fill their stomach with a freaking pickle the size of a water bottle and only had five calories. But what they didn't realize is that that pickle was loaded with sodium. I mean, it's a big, it's like literally like a sodium bomb. You ingest a pickle that size, you can count on your body holding five to 20 pounds of water the next day. Our people had so much excess skin. They didn't know as they were drinking their gallon of water, it was just like, and they'd step on the scale and be like, why am I not losing weight? I don't understand. I'm following the plan. I'm eating pickles. And I'm like, you're eating pickles. That's why you're not losing weight. So watch the pickles. Again, they're good. They're a great additive to salads, or I like them in salads, or sandwiches, or whatever it is. But you're not gonna wanna go on a pickle diet unless you want severe hypertension and swollen limbs. I used to actually eat pickles all the time when I was 18 and 19, and I would come home from work with like, my ankles were like swollen. Like, no joke, I'm gonna find you a picture and put it here. And I would eat them when I was pregnant. And I'm, I had, I, I, I don't know if it was really elephantitis, but I'd be like, I think this is what elephantitis is. And I, you're gonna die. You're gonna die. Here's a picture. Ah! <laughs> Why do I think I'm so funny, Nick? Ah! Oh, you better, you better. <laughs> Now the final food that you think is healthy that probably is not is a protein shake. Yes, 
Again, not all protein shakes are created equally. If you are making your own at home and you're controlling the ingredients, that can be a good protein shake. If you're taking a scoop out of the scooper bottle and you know what's in it and you're good and you're mixing it with water or almond milk, that's a good protein shake. But what I want you to be aware of are these Nutra shops and different, different stands, different health food stores that are usually located right next to a gym and they lure you in with like, oh, I have a cinnamon toast crunch protein shake and a, um, there's a Captain Crunch protein shake and a peanut butter and jelly protein shake. And you go in and they blend these amazing shakes and you, I, you think you're eating healthy, but there, I remember a friend of mine was like, yeah, after every single workout, my wife and I go to the Nutra shop and we get this amazing peanut butter and jelly protein shake. She gets the Captain Crunch. It's, you gotta come try it. And so I went in one time and I was watching them make it. The freaking thing had like 850 calories. It was, they actually put jelly, like it was, there was a scoop of protein and then they put whole milk, then they put jelly in it and like a quarter of a cup of peanut butter. I don't even know, it was just a big calorie bomb. So beware, if you are having protein shakes made, know what's in the protein shake. If you don't, you can just plan on it being a milkshake. And you don't want a milkshake after a workout, unless you're trying to gain in bulk, then you do. All right guys, so there are my 11 foods that have the reputation of being healthy that many times are not. Beware, watch out for them. Tell me what else you want me to talk about below. Please comment, let me know what you want. Give me a thumbs up, I learned that from Ruby. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll be back.